Hey, this is Shane from BitBison, and uh, we're going to go over the uh, different level tiles, the more advanced level tiles present in the Verbi 9 Toolkit. So, uh, as with every other tutorial, open up an empty Unity project, download uh, the Verbi 9 Toolkit from the Unity Asset Store, extract it into your project, and you should be good to go. That's what I've done over here. Uh, an additional step I've done, which shouldn't be of any consequence to you, is that I've created a temp folder. Uh, I just had some stuff that I was trying out, so I put it in there. Uh, what I have done so far is uh, open up the pattern creator scene found under TVNT scenes, scenes pattern creator. I've created a pattern, which you see over here, uh, and I've dropped my character prefab in there too. Now, if you don't know how to do any of this, I suggest you go and watch uh, the tutorials right from the start, because I go over all of this in, in the other tutorials. Um, so, what I have right here is, as I said, a pattern with my character controller in there. And my character controller movement style is set to discrete jump. So that's what that looks like. Now, the first level tile, the first advanced level tile that we're going to look at are uh, is rather the button and uh, door combination. Now the button and door combination uh, looks like this. Now let's place it in for you to have a look. To do that I need to go to enable editing. Uh, remove a few of these tiles by right clicking on them. Let's place a button tile over here and let's place a door tile over here and disable editing. Now let's find our button tile and let's connect it to the door tile. In order to do that what you want to do is select your button tile, level tile, and this is what you're going to see. Uh, the on material represents the material that uh, the button uh, displays when uh, the button is on and the off material likewise displays the material that the button uh, uses when it's off. Now the switch connected tile is the tile that the button will affect when the player goes over it and turns it on. So the switch connected tile will be our door tile. Our door tile is a switch connected tile and if you want to make other switch connected tiles you can have a look at the way the door tile is constructed, the level script for the door tile and uh, follow that to create other switch connected tiles. So to connect the switch to the door tile, I just drag the door tile level tile into that uh, field over there and I should be good to go now. I want to try it out. Click on play. And now what you should see is that when my player gets onto the switch, the switch is activated and uh, the connected tile is uh, the connected tile runs its switched on and switched off uh, function which whatever it does it does. So in my case the door uh, the moment it's switched on the door drops down to the floor and you can cross over the door. Before that you wouldn't be able to because it would act like a barrier. I'd show you that. So before the door is turned off, you can't jump into it, you can't cross over it as it should be. So that is the button and door tile. Now let's cover the chopping block tile. Uh, the chopping block is this tile over here. Now I drop again, get rid of, uh, actually I don't have to get rid of the ground tile. I just pick up the chopping block from here. Now the chopping block is uh, like the coin tiles that I mentioned earlier. It's it's placed on top of a ground tile. So I need to uncheck place solitary to place a chopping block up there. And that's all I need to do. And if I disable this and go into the game, uh, go into the play mode, I have my chopping block doing what my chopping block does. Now if I stand there, I get whacked and killed. So there are a few options to configure this chopping block. I can go in there and uh, click on the tile that represents my chopping block. And I have these options over here. Now if I click on axe down, I can set the axe either up or down as its initial state. 
I can also have the chopping block rotate. So the way to do that is to go to the weapon stand script uh, and uh, on the stand cycle area I give it a few uh, let's give it three different uh, positions of rotation. So the first position if you look at uh, the weapon stand inspector uh, that arrow pointing this way is the direction that the stand is going to rotate in and uh, when I give these some directions this is going to so basically what we're going to have right here is um, our block rotating from position 1 to 2 to 3 and then um, you can choose 1, 2 and left so our block is going to rotate 1, 2 and all the way over to the left uh, I'm probably not giving you very much of an explanation on how that works so just have a look and you should be able to figure it out better it rotates one and then goes all the way over to the left and rotates now if I wanted uh, the chopping block to come back uh, in in the opposite direction I just uncheck the rotate in single direction option and what my chopping block will do now is rotate in one direction and when it's done, it comes back the opposite direction. So now, the functionality that I actually spoke about just now, the rotating in, in, in the right direction and then the wrong direction, is a functionality of the weapon stand script, not so much of the chopping block. The weapon stand script is also used with the shooter level tab, which we will go over later. But uh, this is the basic functionality of the chopping block. And uh, so that's that. Let's uh, now go over the moving platform. Now, a moving platform is exactly that. It's a moving platform. Now, in order to create a moving platform, I, again, delete a few tiles over here, grab my moving platform, here it is, drop that in there, disable editing, click on it, under my pattern object, and uh, if I press F to focus in, what I see here is my moving platform. Now, um, I can give it a, a positive direction, a move in the positive direction. Now, that rail that you see in there is a movement in the positive direction, and I can move it one in the negative direction as well. And uh, this thing tells me which direction uh, the, cho the, the moving uh, platform is going to move initially. So here I've configured it to move positive initially and then move negative. Now, this field over here will uh, configure the delay when the moving platform is changing directions. So uh, when this uh, base reaches here and wants to change direction, there will be a small delay over here, and that's the delay. And that's the field that corresponds to the delay. Uh, this move speed obviously is the move speed. Now I can change my moving platform from going left to right to up and down by turning it to a vertical uh, moving direction but since I've just deleted blocks in a horizontal direction I'll keep it horizontal and now if I hit play uh, I've got my moving platform now in order to get onto my moving platform there I've got onto my moving platform and I can get off my moving platform so yeah that is how the moving platform works. Now let's cover... Now the shooter is a lot like the chopping block, so um, I'll just briefly go over that. So I'll again enable editing, delete a block over here, and actually again, same mistake, did not have to delete that block. The shooter is actually placed over the ground tile, so I uncheck place solitary and place my shooter over there and disable editing. Now let's have a look at what we get. What we have is a shooter. Now let's go have a look at the options you get with the shooter level tab. So the options you get with the shooter is similar to the options that you get with the chopping block. Um, uh, it, again, 
uh, contains a weapon stand. So uh, the same options that uh, apply to the weapon stand on the on the chopping block applies to the weapon stand on the shooter. Now um, for the shooter script, you have bullet distance, which is the distance the bullet will travel before it uh, uh, basically pops out of existence, and the speed of the bullet. Uh, if you click on half phase, it means that uh, the bullet, uh, the shooting stand will not fire its initial bullet, but will change direction first before firing. In most cases, the bullet will fire first, the shooter rather will fire first before changing direction, but if you click half phase on, uh, the shooter will change direction first before firing. So that's what that is. And uh, those are our basic, um, or rather <laughs> our advanced level tiles. Uh, you do have level tiles to change direction, uh, but they are relatively simple for anyone to figure out. All you have to do is just place them in and uh, you should be good to go.